Hare Krishna. Welcome to this Kundalini interview with Shiva Bhagavatam. Welcome everyone online on our Facebook page and our YouTube page. <laughs> A nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the rich mind of the precious gems of all conclusive truths. You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Shrimad Bhagavata Prabhu, Kali Gandhita, Vitya, Sri Krishna Paragatita, O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam. You are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali, you are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Padmaya, Prima Vakshaksharayati, Saranda Sarasiyaya, Sri Krishna Namos Kume, about the supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna himself. Madhika Bandha Matsangi Madhguru Matmahana Manishtara Kamadhyaya Madhanaya Mosute My only friend, constant friend, my spiritual master, my great my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu O bestow of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalted of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Standing on one leg only. So who's speaking? standing on one leg only, <clears throat> which is your truthfulness, and you are now somehow or other hobbling along, but coral personified, Kali, flourishing by the sea, is also for that leg. Purport. The principles of religion do not stand on some dogmas or man-made formulas, but stand on four primary of services, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness. The mass of people must be taught to practice these principles from childhood. Austerity means to accept voluntary which may not be very comfortable for the body but are considered to spiritual realization. For example, fasting. Fasting twice or four times a month is a sort of austerity which may be voluntarily accepted for spiritual realization only and not for any other purposes, political or otherwise. Fasting is meant not for realization but for some other purposes are found in the Bhagavad Gita 17.5-6. Similarly, cleanliness is necessary both for the mind and for the body. Simply bodily cleanliness may help to some extent, but cleanliness of the mind is necessary, and it is affected by glorifying the Supreme Lord. 
No one can cleanse the accumulated mental dust without glorifying the Supreme Lord. A godless civilization cannot cleanse the mind because it has no idea of God. And for this simple reason, people under such a civilization cannot have good qualifications, however, may, however they may be materially equipped. We have to see things by their resultant action. The resultant action of human civilization in the age of Kali is dissatisfaction. So everyone is anxious to get peace of mind. This peace of mind was complete in the Satya age because of the existence of the above mentioned attributes of the human beings. Gradually these attributes have diminished in the Treta Yuga to three-fourths, in the Dwarapa to half, and in this age of Kali to one-fourth, which is also gradually diminishing on account of prevailing untruthfulness. By pride, either artificial or real, the resultant action of austerity is spoiled. By too much affection for female association, cleanliness is spoiled. By too much addiction to intoxication, mercy is spoiled. And by too much lying propaganda, truthfulness is spoiled. The revival of Bhagavad Dharma can save human civilization from falling prey to evils of all description. Yeah, here we have explained. We were talking yesterday, so kind of about this. Yeah. What effects what then here the Prabhupada now uh, puts it all in one sentence. The burden of the earth was certainly diminished by the personality of Godhead and by others as well. When he was present as an incarnation, all good was performed because of his auspicious appearance. 27. Now she, the chaste one, in a fortress man who proposed as rulers. Who is she? And Kao, who, who she represent? Uh, I think mother. 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 Uh, before father. Yes, mother, but mother more specifically? Mother? Uh, who gives uh, everyone everything for us? Yes. Yes, thank you, mother. Yeah, mother nature. Yeah, mother nature. Oh, yeah, yeah. She represents in this case. Yeah, she gives. qualified to protect the sufferers is rule the state. Untrained lower class men or with ambition to protect the sufferers cannot be placed on the seat of the administrator. Unfortunately in the age of Kali the lower men occupy the post of a ruler and instead of protecting the sufferers are quite intolerable for everyone qualify themselves at the court and thus the chaste mother earth both men that is the future of the world in the age of Kali and irreducible So the suitable king to people systematically in the teaching of Srimad Bhagavan will clear up the hazy atmosphere of corruption, bribery, blackmail, etc. Yeah, so she in the context that is earth, yeah, here is earth. Not a cow, but earth. Hmm. Referring to earth. And bull represents? Bull represents the father. Yeah, but yeah, even more specifically, like because uh, bull, bull was was a uh, standing on one leg or was a cow standing on one leg? I was saying bull was standing. What do you think? She's <laughs> she knows. She, she knows. Twenty-eight. Maharaj Parikshit, who could fight 1,000 enemies single-handedly, thus pacify the personality of religion and the earth. Okay, you see? Mm. We, just, we just got it here. Personality of religion, bull, mm, yeah. and this bull, and the earth. There was cow, yeah. mother, so yeah. there's... Yeah. Okay, you got it. Then he took up his sharp sword to kill the personality of Kali, who is the cause of all irreligion. Purport. As described above, the personality of Kali is he who deliberately commits all kinds of sinful acts which are forbidden in the revealed scriptures. This age of Kali will certainly be full of, the, of all activities of Kali, but this does not mean that the leaders of society, the executive heads, 
the learned and intelligent men or above all the devotees of the Lord should sit down tightly and become callous to the reactions of the age of Kali. In the rainy season, certainly there will be profuse, profuse rainfalls, but that does not mean that men should not take means to protect themselves from the rains. It is the duty of the executive heads of state and others to take all necessary actions against the activities of Kali or the persons influenced by the age of Kali. And Maharaj Parishit is the ideal executive head of the state, for at once he was ready to kill the personality of Kali with his sharp sword. The administrators should not simply pass resolutions for anti-corruptional steps, but they must be ready with sharp swords to kill the persons creating corruptions in the angle of vision of the recognized Shastras. The administrators cannot prevent corrupt activities by allowing wine shops. They must at once close all shops of intoxicating drugs and wine and force punishment even by death for those who indulge in, in habits of intoxication of all description. That is the way of stopping the activities of Kali, as exhibited herein by Maharaj Parikshit, the Mahārāda. 29. When the personality of Kali understood that the king was willing to kill him, he at once abandoned the dress of a king and, under pressure of fear, completely surrendered to him, bowing his head. Perfect. The royal dress of the personality of Kali is artificial. The royal dress is suitable for a king of Kshatriya, but when a lower class man artificially dresses himself as a king, his real identity is disclosed by the challenge of the bona fide Kshatriya like Maharaj Parishit. A real Kshatriya never surrenders. He accepts the challenge of his rival, rival Kshatriya and he fights either to die or to win. Surrender is unknown to a real Kshatriya. In the age of Kali, there are so many pretenders dressed and posed like administrators or executive heads but their real identity is disclosed when they are challenged by a real Kshatriya. Therefore, when the artificially dressed personality of Kali saw that to fight Maharaj Parikshit was beyond his ability, he bowed down his head like a subordinate and gave up his royal dress. 30. Maharaj Parikshit, who was qualified to accept surrender and worthy of being sung in history, did not kill the poor surrendered and fallen Kali, but smiled compassionately, for he was kind to the poor. Perfect. Even an ordinary Kshatriya does not kill a surrendered person. And what to speak of Maharaj Parikshit, who was by nature compassionate and kind to the poor. He was smiling because the artificially dressed Kali had disclosed his identity as a lower class man, and he was thinking how ironic it was that although no one was saved of his sharp sword when he desired to kill Kali, he was a compassion saved by the will of providence. 31. The king thus said, We have inherited the fame of Arjuna. Therefore, since you have surrendered yourself with folded hands, you need not fear for your life. But you cannot remain in my kingdom, for you are the friend of irreligion. Purpose. Personality of Kali, who is the friend of all kinds of irreligiosities, may be excused if he surrenders. But in all circumstances, he cannot be allowed to live as a citizen in any part of a welfare state. The Pandavas were entrusted representatives of the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, who practically brought into battle, brought into being the battle of Kurukshetra, but not for any personal and not otherwise. The friends of irreligiosity should be banished from the state, and that will save the state from corruption. 32. If the personality of Kali, irreligion, is allowed to act as a man-god or an executive head, certainly irre irreligion, irreligious principles like greed, falsehood, robbery, incivility, treachery, misfortune, cheating, quarrel, and vanity will ab abound. Perfect. The principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness, as we have already discussed, may be followed by the follower of any faith. There is no need to turn from Hindu to Mohammedan to Christian or has become a re renegade. The religion are not the dogmas may be different in terms of place concerned. One has to see whether the aims of religion have been achieved. Sticking to the dogmas and formulas without attaining the real principles is not good. A secular state may be impartial to any particular type of faith, 
that the state cannot be indifferent to the principles of religion as above mentioned. But in the age of Kali, the executive heads of state will be indifferent to such religious principles, and therefore under their patronage, the opponents of religious principles such as greed, falsehood, cheating and pilfering, which I don't know what it is, dictionary check. Pilfery is petty theft. Okay. The opponent, opponents of religious principles such as greed, falsehood, cheating, and pilfering will naturally follow, and so there will be no meaning to propaganda, crying to stop corruption in the state. 33. Therefore, O friend of irreligion, you do not deserve to remain in a place where experts perform sacrifices according to truth and religious principles for the satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of God. Purport, Yageshwara, or the Supreme Personality of God, is the beneficiary of all kinds of sacrificial ceremonies. Such sacrificial ceremonies are prescribed differently in the scriptures for different ages. In other words, sacrifice means to accept the supremacy of the Lord and thereby perform acts by which the Lord may be satisfied in all respects. The atheists do not believe in the existence of God and they do not perform any sacrifice for the satisfaction of the Lord. Any place or country where the supremacy of the Lord is accepted and those sacrifices performed is called Brahma Varta. There are different countries in different parts of the world, and each and every country may have different types of sacrifice to please the Supreme Lord. But the central point in pleasing Him is ascertained in the Bhagavatam, and it is truthfulness. The basic principle of religion is truthfulness, and the ultimate goal of all religions is to satisfy the Lord. <coughs> In this age of Kali, the greatest common formula of sacrifice is the Sankirtan Yagya. That is the opinion of the experts who know how to propagate the process of Yagya. Lord Chaitanya preached this method of Yagya, and it is understood from this verse that the sacrificial method, method of Sankirtan Yagya may be performed anywhere and everywhere in order to drive away the personality of Kali and save human society from falling prey to the influence of the age. 34. In all sacrificial ceremonies, although sometimes a demigod is worshipped, the Supreme Lord, Personality of God, is worshipped because He is the super soul of everyone and exists both inside and outside like the air. Thus it is He only who awards all welfare to the worshipper. Purport. It is even sometimes seen that demigods like Indra and Chandra are worshipped and offered sacrificial awards, yet the rewards of all such sacrifices are awarded to the worshipper by the Supreme Lord, and it is the Lord only who can offer all welfare to the worshipper. The demigods, although worshipped, cannot do anything without the sanction of the Lord, because the Lord is the super soul of everyone, both moving and non-moving. In Bhagavad Gita 9.23, the Lord Himself confirms this in the following shlokan. Yetyanya devata bhakta yajante shadayan vitaha ketimam evakam teya yajan avidi purvakam. Whatever a man may sacrifice to other gods, O son of Kunti, is really meant for me alone, but it is offered, but it is offered without true understanding. The fact is that the Supreme Lord is one without a second. There is no God other than the Lord Himself. Thus the Supreme Lord is eternally transcendental to the material creation. But there are many who worship the demigods like the sun, the moon and Indra, who are only material representatives of the Supreme Lord. These demigods are indirect, qualitative representations of the Supreme Lord. A learned scholar or devotee, however, knows who is who. Therefore, he directly worships the Supreme Lord and is not diverted by the material, qualitative representations. Those who are not so learned worship such qualitative, material representations, but their worship is unceremonious because it is irregular. 
35. Sri Sutta Goswami said, The personality of Kali, thus being ordered by Maharaj Parikshit, began to tremble in fear. Seeing the king before him like Yamaraj, ready to kill him, Kali spoke to the king as follows. Purport. The king was ready to kill the personality of Kali at once, as soon as he disobeyed his order. Otherwise, the king had no objection to allow him to prolong his life. The personality of Kali also, after attempting to get rid of the punishment in various ways, decided that he must surrender unto him, and thus he began to tremble in fear of his life. The king or the executive head must be so strong as to stand before the personality of Kali like the personality of death, Yamaraj. The king's order must be obeyed, otherwise the culprit's life is in risk. That is the way to rule the personalities of Kali, who create disturbance in the normal life of the state citizens. 36. Now Kali, Kali Umacha. O oh, Your Majesty, Though I may live anywhere and everywhere under your order, I shall but see you with bow and arrows wherever I look. Purport. The personality of Kali could see that Maharaj Parishit was the emperor of all lands all over the world. And thus anywhere he might live, he would have to meet with the same mood of the king. The personality of Kali was meant for mischief, and Maharaj Parishit was meant for subduing all kinds of mischief mongers especially the personality of Kali. It was better, therefore, for the personality of Kali to have been killed by the king then and there, then and there, instead of being killed elsewhere. He was, after all, a surrendered soul before the king, and it was for the king to do what was required. 37. Therefore, O chief amongst the protectors of religion, please fix some place for me where I can live permanently under the protection of your, of your government. Purport. The personality of Kali addressed Maharaj Pariksit as the chief amongst the protectors of religiosity because the king refrained from killing a person who surrendered unto him. A surrendered soul should be given all protection even though he may be an enemy. That is the principle of religion. And we can just imagine what sort of protection is given by the personality of God to the person who surrenders unto him, not as an enemy, but as a devoted servitor. The Lord protects the surrendered soul from all sins and all resulting reactions of sinful acts. Bhagavad Gita 1866. 38. We can chant this one. Sutta Vacha Vyadita Shadatasme Sananin Kalayadado Jitam Panam Sriyam Suna Yatra Dharma Shatur Yudam Translation Sutta Goswami said Maharaj Parikshit, thus being petitioned by the personality of Kali, gave him permission to reside in places where gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter were performed. Report. The basic principles of irreligiosity, such as pride, prostitution, intoxication, and falsehood, counteract the four principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness. The personality of Kali was given permission to live in four places particularly mentioned by the king, namely the place of gambling, the place of prostitution, the place of drinking, and the place of animal slaughter. Shri Jiva Goswami directs that drinking against the principles of scriptures such as the Sastramani Yagya, association with Mormon women outside marriage, and killing animals against the injunctions of scriptures are irreligious. In the Vedas, two different types of injunctions are there for the Pravitas, or those who are engaged in material enjoyment, and for the Nivritas, those who are liberated from material bondage. The Vedic injunction for the Pravritas is to gradually regulate their activities towards the path of liberation. Therefore, for those who are in the lowest stage of ignorance and who indulge in wine and women in flesh, drinking by performing Satramani Yagya, association of women by marriage and flesh eating by sacrifices, are sometimes recommended. Such recommendations in Vedic literatures are meant for a particular class of men and not for all. But because they are injunctions of the Vedas for particular types of persons, such activities by the Pravitas are not considered a dharma. 
one man's food may be poisoned, poisoned for others. Similarly, what is recommended for those in the mode of ignorance may be poisoned for those in the mode of goodness. Shri Jiva Goswami Prabhu therefore affirms that recommendations in the scriptures for a certain class of men are never to be considered a dharma or irreligious. But such activities are factually a dharma and they are never to be encouraged. The recommendations in the scriptures are not meant for the encouragement of such a dharma but for regulating the necessary adharma gradually toward the path of dharma. Following the footsteps of Maharaj Parishad, it is the duty of all executive heads of states to see that the principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy and truthfulness, are established in the state, and that the principles of irreligion, namely pride, illicit female association and or prostitution, intoxication and falsity, are checked by all means. And to make the best use of a bad bargain, the personality of Kali may be transferred to places of gambling, drinking, prostitution, and slaughterhouses, if there are any places like that. Those who are addicted to these irreligious habits may be regulated by the injunctions of the scripture. In no circumstances should they be encouraged by any state. In other words, the state should categorically stop all sorts of gambling, drinking, prostitution, and falsity. The state which wants to eradicate corruption by majority, may introduce the principles of religion in the following manner. Number one, two compulsory fastings, fasting days in a month, if not more, austerity. <clears throat> Even from the economic point of view, such two fasting days in a month in a state will save tons of food and the system will also act very favorably on the general health of the citizens. Number two, there must be compulsory marriage of young boys and girls attaining 24 years of age and 16 years of age respectively. There is no harm in core education in the schools and colleges, provided the boys and girls are duly married. And in case there is any intimate connection between a male and female student, they should be married properly without illicit relation. The Divorce Act is encouraging prostitution, and this should be abolished. Number three. The citizens of the state must give in charity up to 50% of their income for the purpose of creating a spiritual atmosphere in the state or in human society, both individually and collectively. They should preach the principles of Bhagavatam by A. Karma Yoga or doing everything for the satisfaction of the Lord, B. Regular hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam from author authorized persons or realized souls, C. Chanting of the glories of the Lord congregationally at home or at places of worship. D. Rendering all kinds of service to Bhagavatam, Bhagavatas engaged in preaching Srimad Bhagavatam. And E. Residing in a place where the atmosphere is saturated, saturated with God consciousness. If the state is regulated by the above process, naturally there will be God consciousness everywhere. Gambling of all description, even speculative business enterprise, is considered to be degrading, and when gambling is encouraged in the state, there is a complete disappearance of truthfulness. Allowing young boys and girls to remain unmarried more than the above mentioned ages and licensing animal slaughterhouses of all description should be the ones prohibited. The flesh eaters may be allowed to take flesh as mentioned in the scriptures and not otherwise. Intoxication of all description even smoking cigarettes, chewing tobacco, or the drinking tea must be prohibited. 39. The personality of Kali asked for something more. And because of his begging, the king gave him permission to live where there is gold. Because wherever there is gold, there is also falsity, intoxication, lust, envy, and enmity. Perfect. Although Maharaj Parishad gave Kali permission to live in four places, it was very difficult for him to find the places because during the reign of Maharaj Parishad there were no such places. Therefore Kali asked the king to give him something practical which could be utilized for his nefarious purposes. Maharaj Parishad thus gave him permission to live in a place where there is gold because wherever there is gold there are all the above mentioned four things and over and above them there is enmity also. So the personality of Kali became gold standardized. According to Srimad Bhagavatam, gold encourages falsity, intoxication, prostitution, envy and enmity. 
Even a gold standard exchange and currency is bad. Gold standard currency is based on falsehood because the currency is not on the par with the reserved gold. The, basis, the, best, the basic principle is falsity because currency notes are issued in value beyond that of the actual reserved gold. This artificial inflation of currency by the authorities encourages prostitution of the state economy. The price of commodities becomes artificially inflated because of bad money or artificial currency notes. Bad money drives away good money. Instead of paper currency, actual gold coins should be used for exchange and this will stop the prostitution of gold. Gold ornaments for women may be allowed by control, not by quality, but by quantity. This will discourage lust, envy and enmity. When there is actual gold currency in the form of coins, the influence of gold in producing falsity, prostitution, etc. will automatically cease. There will be no need of an anti-corruption ministry for another term of prostitution and falsity of purpose. the only way that uh, all the bad influences would be dispelled. The Prabhupada gives it this uh, um, highest vision. Forty. Thus the personality of Kali, by the directions of Maharaj Parishit, the son of Uttara, was allowed to live in those five cases. Purport. Thus the age of Kali began with gold standardization, and therefore falsity, intoxication, animal slaughter, and prostitution are rampant all over the world, and the saner sanction is eager to drive out corruption. The contracting process is suggested above, and everyone can take advantage of this suggestion. 41. Therefore, whoever desires progressive well-being, especially kings, religionists, religionists, Public leaders, brahmanas and sannyasis, should never come in contact with the four above mentioned irreligious principles. Perfect. The brahmanas are the religious preceptors for all other castes, and the sannyasis are the spiritual masters for all the castes and orders of society. So also are the king and the public leaders who are responsible for the material welfare of all people. The progressive Religionists and those who are responsible human beings or those who do not want to spoil their valuable human lives should refrain from all the principles of irreligiosity, especially illicit connection with memory. If a Brahmana is not truthful, all his claims as a Brahmana at once become null or and void. None. None. Yeah. If a sannyasi is illicitly, if a sannyasi is illicitly connected with women, all his claims as a sannyasi at once become false. Similarly, if the king and the public leader are unnecess unnecessarily proud or habituated to drinking and smoking, certainly they become disqualified to discharge public welfare activities. Truthfulness is the basic basic principle for all religions. The four leaders of the human society, namely the sannyasis, the Brahma, Brahmana, the king and the public leader, must be tested crucially by their character and qualification. Before one can be accepted as a spiritual or material master of society, he must be tested by the above-mentioned criteria of character. Such public leaders may be less qualified in economic qualifications, but it is necessary, necessary primary primarily that they be free from the contamination of the four disqualifications, namely gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter. 42. Thereafter, the king re-established the lost legs of the personality of religion, the bull, and by encouraging activities, he sufficiently improved the condition of the earth. Purport. By designating 
particular places for the personality of Kali. Maharaj Parishad practically cheated Kali. In the presence of Kali, Dharma in the shape of a bull and the earth in the shape of a cow, he could actually estimate the general condition of his kingdom and therefore he at once took proper steps to re-establish the legs of the bull, namely austerity, cleanliness and mercy. And for the general benefit of the people of the world, he saw that the gold stock might be employed for stabilization. Gold is certainly a generator of falsity, intoxication, prostitution, enmity and violence, but under the guidance of a proper king or public leader, or a brahmana or a sannyasi, the same gold can be properly utilized to re-establish the lost legs of the bull, the personality of religion. Maharaj Pariksha, therefore, like his grandfather Arjuna, collected all illicit gold kept for the propensities of Kali and employed it in the Sankirtan Nyagya as per instruction of the Srimad Bhagavatam. As we have suggested before, one's accumulated wealth may be divided into three parts for distribution, namely 50% for the service of the Lord, 25% for the family members, and 25% for personal necessities. Spending 50% for the service of the Lord or for propagation of spiritual knowledge in society by way of the Sankirtan Yagya is the maximum display of human mercy. People of the world are generally in darkness regarding spiritual knowledge, especially in regard to the devotional service of the Lord. And therefore, to propagate the systematic transcendental knowledge of devotional service is the greatest mercy that one can show in this world. When everyone is taught to sac sacrifice 50% of his accumulated gold for the Lord's service, certainly austerity, kindness and mercy automatically ensue and thus the lost three legs of the personality religion are automatically established. When there is sufficient austerity, cleanliness, mercy and truthfulness, naturally Mother Earth is completely satisfied and there is very little chance for Kali to infiltrate the structure of human society. Welcome John. Haribo. Most fortunate Emperor Maharaj Pariksit, who was entrusted with the kingdom of Hastinapur by Maharaj Yudhisthira, when he desired to retire to the forest, is now ruling the world with great success due to his being glorified by the deeds of the kings of the Kuru dynasty. The prolonged sacrificial ceremonies undertaken by the sages of Naivishalanya will be gone shortly after the demise. A Maharaj Pariksit. The sacrifice was to continue for 1,000 years. And it is understood that in the beginning, some of the contemporaries of Baladev, the elder brother of Lord Krishna, also visited this sacrificial place. According to some authorities, the present tense is also used to indicate the nearest margin of time from the past. In that sense, the present tense is applied in the reign of Maharaj Pariksit here. For a continuous fact, also present tense can be used. The principles of Maharaj Pariksit can still be continued, and human society can still be improved if there is determination by the authorities. We can still purge out from the state all the activities of immorality introduced by the personality of Kali if we are determined to take action like Maharaj Pariksit. He allowed some place for Kali, but in fact, Kali could not find such places in the world at all because Maharaj Pariksit was strictly vigilant to see that there, was, there were no places for gambling, drinking, prostitution and animal slaughter. 
Modern administrators want to punish corruption from the state, but fools as they are, they do not know how to do it. They want to issue licenses for counting houses, wine and other intoxicating drug houses, brothels, hotel prostitution and cinema houses. And falsity in everything, even in their own, and they want at the same time to drive out corruption from the state. They want the kingdom of God without God consciousness. How can it be possible to adjust two contradictory matters? If we want to drive out corruption from the state, we must first of all organize society to accept the principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness. And to make the condition favorable, we must close all places of gambling drinking, prostitution, and falsity. These are some of the practical lessons from the pages of Sri Manan Bhagavatam. Hmm. Text number 45. <coughs> Translation. Maharaj Prikshit, the son of Abhimanyu, is so experienced that by dint of his expert administration and patronage, it has been possible for you to perform a sacrifice such as this. The Brahmins and the Sannyasis are expert in the spiritual advancement of society, whereas the Kshatriyas or the administrators are expert in the material peace and prosperity of human society. Both of them are the pillars of all happiness. And therefore, they are meant for a full cooperation for common welfare. Maharaj Brikshit was experienced enough to drive away Kali from his field of activities and thereby make the state receptive to spiritual enlightenment. If the common people are not receptive, it is very difficult to impress upon them the necessity of spiritual enlightenment. Austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness, the basic principles of religion, prepare the ground for the reception of advancement and spiritual knowledge. And Maharaj Prikshit made this favorable condition possible. Thus, the Rishis of Nanishananya were able to perform the sacrifices for a thousand years. In other words, without state support, no doctrines of philosophy or religious principles can progressively advance. There should be complete cooperation between the Brahmins and the Kshatriyas for this common good. Even unto Maharaj Ashoka, the same spirit was prevailing. Lord Buddha was sufficiently supported by King Ashoka, and thus this particular cult of knowledge was spread all over the world. Thus end the Bhakti Vanta Prophets of the first canto, 17th chapter of the Sri Mahalakitan entitled Punishment and Reward of Time. Yeah. On to chapter 18, what are you finished? Uh, Two more chapters. Nice. Done a couple of months. Since October, you did? The Kartik. November. So, Maharaj Pariksha cursed by Brahman Boy. This is what brings me to the age of Kali. of the personality of God in Sri Krishna, who acts wonderfully, Maharaj Prikshit, though struck by the weapon of the son of Rama in his mother's room, could not be burned. Purpur as Sri Prabhupada. The sages of Lamisha Lani became struck with wonder after hearing about the wonderful administration of Maharaj Prikshit, especially in reference to his punishing the personality of Kali and making him completely unable to do any harm within the kingdom. Sutta Goswami was equally anxious to describe Maharaj Prakash's wonderful birth and death, and this verse is stated by Sutta Goswami to increase the interest of the sages of Lanesha Anya. Text number 19.
Furthermore, Mara's preached with all his conscious heats and others to the personality of God, and therefore he was neither afraid nor overwhelmed by fear due to a sniper, which was to bite him because of the fury of a Brahmin boy. Poor poor Vishwini Prabhupada. A self surrendered devotee of the Lord is called Narayan Parayan. Such a person is never afraid of any place or person, not even of death. For him, nothing is as important as the Supreme Lord, and thus he gives equal importance to heaven and hell. He knows well that both heaven and hell are creations of the Lord, and similarly, life and death are different conditions of existence created by the Lord. But in all conditions and in all circumstances, remembrance of Narayan is essential. The Narayan, Narayan practices is constantly. Maharaj Pariksit was such a pure devotee. He was wrongly cursed by an inexperienced son of a Brahmin who was under the influence of Kali, and Maharaj Pariksit took this to be sent by Narayan. He knew that Narayan, Lord Krishna, had saved him when he was born in the womb of his mother, and if he were to be killed by a snake bite, it would also take place by the will of the Lord. The devotee never goes against the will of the Lord. Anything sent by God is a blessing for the devotee. Therefore, Maharaj Pariksit was neither afraid of nor bewildered by such things. This is the sign of a pure devotee of the Lord. He accepts anything as the mercy of the Lord. Hello. You come to read as well. Hello, Maharaj. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm your speaker. It is. I can't see anything. Yeah. Richard Jake Hanley. Hey. Hey. Maybe I'm coming, huh? 18.3. Translation. Furthermore, after leaving all his associates, the king surrendered himself as a disciple to the son of Vyas Shukdeva Swami, and thus he was able to understand the actual position of the personality of Godhead. The word Ajita is significant here. The personality of Godhead, Shri Krishna, is known as Ajita, but uncomfortable. And he is so in every respect. He is uncomfortable, or no one can know his actual position. He is uncomfortable by knowledge also. We have heard about his dam or place, eternal Goloka Vrindavan, but there are many scholars who inter interpret and hit this above in different ways. But by the grace of a spiritual master like Shukdev Goswami, under whom the king gave himself up as a most humble disciple, who was able to understand the actual position of the Lord, his eternal abode and his transcendental paraphernalia in that arm or abode. Knowing the transcendental position of the Lord and the transcendental method by which one can approach that transcendental dam, the king was confident about his ultimate destination, and by knowing this he could have leave aside everything material even his own body, without any difficulty of attachment. In the back of the Gita, it is stated, Param Drishva Nivartate. One can give up all connection with material attachment when one is able to see the Param or the superior quality of things. From Bhagavad Gita, we understand the quality of the Lord's energy that is superior to the material quality of energy. And by the grace of a bona fide spiritual master like Shukdev Goswami, it is quite possible to know everything of the superior energy of the Lord by which the Lord manifests his eternal name, quality, pastimes, paraphernalia, and variegatedness. Unless one thoroughly understands this superior or eternal energy of the Lord, it is not possible to leave the material energy. However, one may theoretically speculate on the true nature of the absolute truth. By the grace of Lord Krishna, Maharaj Pariksit was able to receive the mercy of such a personality 
as shook they across on him, and thus he was able to know the actual position of the unconquerable Lord. It is very difficult to find the Lord from the Vedic literatures, but it is very easy to know him by the mercy of a liberated devotee as shook they had lost one. Translation. This was so because those who have dedicated their lives to the transcendental topics of the personality of Godhead, of whom the Vedic hymns sing, and who are constantly engaged in remembering the lowest speed of the Lord, do not run the risk of having misconceptions, even at the last moment of their lives. The highest perfection of life is attained by remembering the transcendental nature of the Lord at the last moment of one's life. This perfection of life is made possible by one who has learned the actual transcendental nature of the Lord from the day it came, sung by a liberated soul like Chukhaya Goswami, or someone in that line of the scriptic succession. There is no gain in hearing the Vedic hymns from some naked speculator. When the saying is heard from an actual self-realized soul and is properly understood by service and submission, everything becomes transparently clear. Thus, a submissive disciple is able to live transcendently and continue to the end of life. By scientific adaptation, one is able to remember the Lord even at the end of life, and the power of remembrance is slackened due to the arrangement of bodily membranes. For a common man, it is very difficult to remember things as they are at the time of death. But by the grace of the Lord and his bona fide devotees, the spiritual masters, one can get this opportunity without difficulty. And it was done in the case of Maharaj Abhishek. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh.